Hey y'all, it is Sunday, March 13th, and I uh, woke up this morning to frost and ice on the bird baths. Um, very cold, and uh, but it's warmed up now. It's in the 50s, and I'm hoping that that was the last time we're gonna have uh, ice uh, this year. I had already planted some things and they got a little nipped by the frost, but uh, yesterday I drove all over Kingdom Come and I bought some plants and I'm about to plant them out. And so I wanted to show them to you before I get all sweaty and icky. So here's my plant haul. I went to three different places and uh, I went to Streets first. So this is where I got this stuff. So Streets is in Fairhope and I got this uh, adorable little Scaviosa and this uh, light green Mexican uh, you know, heather. I've grown the dark green ones, but I've never grown the light green. And got this lovely um, Gara that's got these little kind of butterfly flowers on it. And this, uh, let's see, fountain grass. It's the fireworks kind, it's got pink on it. So I've got some that has burgundy, but this one's got little pink stripes in it. So I'm excited about that. And this I've never grown before, but don't you love the flowers? Look at that dark center with the light around it. Um, it's called Margarita Dark Pink Cape Daisy. So we're gonna see how that grows. I do love it. They have all kinds of different uh, colors, but this one really stood out to me. And then here, some Biden's Pretty in Pink. Now what's funny about this is I have collected Biden's Alba. It's a, a wild flower around here and it has white flowers, so I know I can grow this with the paint because I've been able to grow that other stuff, um, really not even trying. And then this is one of those lovely uh, sun patients. It's called Compact Orchid Blush. Isn't that pretty? They had all kinds of stuff at streets. This was just a little bit of a taste of what they had. Um, they were frantically taking everything and putting it in because the wind and the uh, bad weather were coming so I know they'll have more amazing things and then this is stuff that I got at Cornucopia um, look at this petunia just oh look at the color I want to wear it crazy tunia cosmic purple mm, I love that and it's gonna look so cool I think I'm gonna put it in some pots and I'm gonna let this uh, sweet potato vine kind of uh, trail off of the front and maybe the petunias will trail off too. I got this uh, delphinium. Now I have never been able to make delphinium grow so I'm going to try it again. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm just I'm going to try. I'm just going to that's all I can do. Um, and I got some of this gray green foliage kind of I think it's got little pink flowers on it but um, I've never grown this so not sure how to pronounce that. Helichrysum simpraviva. So uh, that's going to be cool. I'm probably going to put one of those in a pot. I also got some rosemary. No, no, this is lavender. I always get them confused. But um, lavender is something that I've never really been able to grow here. And I've done it all kinds of different ways. So this is the kind. Lavender phenomenal. Extra sensory. So we'll see. It's got the promise of being phenomenal. So, um, also, I got this bronze fennel. Don't you love the airiness of it and the just the color of it? It's so interesting. And these, I didn't mean to buy these. I, it, it says, look at this, it says Joe Pie Weed down there on the pot. And then in the thing, it says black and blue salvia. Well, I meant to get Joe Pie Weed because I know what black and blue salvia does and uh, it gets so massive. Um, so now, you know, my idea of where I'm going to plant that is going to be different because Joe Pie Weed would have gotten big but not crazy like the black and blue salvia is. I'm going to show you what mine looks like now. Well, I need a measuring stick to show you how tall this black and blue salvia is because it's, it's, it's almost as tall as I am. I mean, look, look, look at that, look, look, it's, as tall as me and when I first grew it I it didn't even look like it was going to live let me turn this around so you can see it okay. so so that's black and blue salvia there it's about five feet tall here's another one 
and they're just kind of goofy looking kind of sentinels to this bed now and they're shading out things and I was thinking about possibly moving them they're just huge that's not what I was going for so I'm not going to be able to plant that black and blue salvia where I was planning on putting Joe pie weed um, so we're gonna have to change that so the only lavender that I've ever been able to keep alive is this lavender right here and it's actually growing in the shadow of this black and blue salvia but look at that bloom isn't it pretty I just I can't can't cut it back can't cut it down but uh, this rosemary is straining for light and I mean it's, it's it is in shade but uh, oh and here look at that that is some sun patience coming back um, so I'm thinking maybe the sun patients I had several and look here's here's another one that seems to be coming back so we'll see we'll see what happens with that um, I, I didn't think that they were perennials but maybe they'll prove me wrong I usually don't do videos in the bright sunshine because I'm always afraid that they're gonna be washed out but uh, this looks looking pretty good do you see this white right here that's that alyssum that I started from seed several months ago and the thing is it looks very similar to weeds that I have growing and so I know I threw seed around in more places than this and I've yanked it up as a weed because I just didn't recognize it as alyssum but look see I put purple at the edge there and then I threw out the white and also when I planted that I planted some um, variegated nasturtiums and they got hit by the frost you can see here's one right here it may come back um, and then I also planted some poppy flowers they're not gonna make it but you can see the lemon balm just is taken over again I just don't want this to turn into lemon balm central probably gonna yank some of this out but look at this We've got our milkweed coming up so strong and happy. I've got a little precious carpet of violets going under here. I love them. I don't know why people treat them like weeds. I think they're fabulous. I've got to show you how high up the passion flower vine has grown. It is almost to the roof of the house. I'm really looking forward to it growing all the way across I was hoping these nasturtiums would climb they're they're kind of going outward rather than upward so they may not make it by the time the um, warm weather hits and the pansies are just looking so fun I threw these seeds in here and they just came up all frilly and fun let's see if we can get pretty I've planted hyacinth bean vines all along the fence line because I know that they'll grow crazy and cover this whole fence from here all the way down I've also planted some uh, morning glories and well, actually several kinds of morning glories and some butterfly pea seeds and some just regular pea seeds look how big around this stalk is for this uh, um, kale it is this is like the second I think it's this is the second year I've grown it at first it was in a pot either second or third but isn't it pretty I just love the dark colors I love the sun shining through the leaves it's so sculptural I don't even want to eat it I just want to look at it Look at this crazy huge bunch of lemons that were growing on my tree. It's the seven lemons, and they're all attached. This thing is heavy. It probably weighs about, I don't know, five or six pounds, and it was all together on the lemon tree. I'm not going to let that happen again. I don't think that's good for the lemon tree to try to hold that much weight. All right, so I haven't managed to plant anything. I just put everything around just trying to decide where it's going to go and 
I'll just set it out right here. If you can see, I just wanted a mixture of light and dark and things that have movement and these pops of silver. So I'm hoping that this will all fill in and just have a lot of fun color and texture. I moved all the pots that have the tulips in them and the uh, pansies in them to the back of the circle garden. And I've put these pots over here because I think I'm going to put um, coleus in them again because that did really well. So I'm going to plant these in in the morning. And I put some yellow over here in this bed. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. When I was over here last year, I planted a Dutchman's pipe vine and it didn't really do well. It kind of piddled, was piddly, but um, it did survive the winter. And look at this. Look at that. That is a little, wait, maybe I should zoom in. A little Dutchman's pipe. I guess it's a flower. Wait, let's zoom in. So there it is with the sun shining behind it. A little Dutchman's pipe on the Dutchman's pipe vine. Why I'm excited about this pipe vine is because it is the larval host plant for pipe vine swallowtails. And pipe vine swallowtails are like super blue and black. They're gorgeous. So you can see better from this direction how I've moved the pots to the back side of the circle garden. And once the tulips come up, I'm going to plant annuals in them. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you this. So I'm gonna put this pot, I'm gonna put all these snap dragons in this pot right here, and I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so that you can see the snap dragons from the other side of the fountain. Let's see if I can give you the effect. It's going to be up a little bit higher so you can see them. Won't that be really pretty? We planted corn in these, this row of pots right here last week, and we've already got some coming up. I've planted corn in a container before, and I didn't expect it to grow, but it did. It grew, and what I did when I planted it was I planted some butterfly pea, that blue butterfly pea with it so it would climb up. So right here you can see, here, let me zoom in. That's corn right there in the center, and then this is blue butterfly pea coming up right next to it. So that's going to be an exciting adventure. Um, everybody says you should plant a lot of corn so that it can cross or pollinate or whatever. But you know, this will be enough because it worked last time. And I guess, I don't know if it's the bees that are working over time, but something pollinated it because we had some really great corn that grew from the pot in the pots. I didn't get as much done as I expected that I would. Uh, I ended up uh, putting the plants around and then I just went to Smoothie King and got a smoothie because I uh, got hot and tired. But um, I'm gonna water these plants and by next Friday or Saturday, Saturday I'll have them planted in. I can show them to you. And also I wanna end this video showing you some um, a butterfly that I released. It was an uh, Eastern Black Swallowtail. I released it about a couple of weeks ago and uh, some other little things that I found around the garden. Y'all have a great gardening week. Thanks for watching. Bye. I have an Eastern Black Swallowtail ready to release. I don't know if I can get it. It's, he's stuck on, uh, I'm not sure what. So let's see if I can, oops. He's stuck on some, oof. Oh, oh. <laughs> So I woke up this morning and I checked on my butterflies and I had this Eastern Black Swallowtail butterfly ready to release. This is one of the ones that overwintered in my potting shed um, on a pot of parsley. And uh, just look at that gorgeous, 
gorgeous blue on the wings. Is it not perfection? So anytime that I go and shop for plants, I always look at their parsley to see if there are some caterpillars on them or even some eggs and um, I will buy it. This is curled leaf parsley. This is the plant that this um, caterpillar was found on at a nursery and it is an eastern black swallowtail uh, butterfly but uh, its caterpillars are yellow and black. They look similar to monarch caterpillars but uh, they, they have a different pattern on them. So this is March 3rd and I woke up this morning and this eastern black swallowtail had emerged and I had kept it um, in my potting shed for the past, you know, I would say it's been about seven months. Isn't it beautiful? I, I thought I would put it on the parsley since I want it to remember where it is when it wants to come back and lay eggs or whatever it's going to do. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is a male or a female. Sometimes being able to get um, eastern black swallowtails in your garden is as easy as buying them from the local nursery. So whenever I find the caterpillars on parsley or uh, fennel or I always buy them and rescue them because I'm concerned that you know the people at the nursery may not know what they are and um, that's that's the way I, I get them so that's a little trick I changed my mind and decided to put this eastern black swallowtail butterfly on this yarrow because it looks so lovely against the white isn't it pretty it's March 3rd and I'm trimming back my king tut grass and I noticed this monarch chrysalis on the grass. I literally almost threw out this baby with the bathwater. So now I'm having to be super careful because there's just no telling how many more chrysalises are out here. So in another two weeks, I'm gonna have this monarch butterfly emerge. I'm so excited. And I don't remember what kind of plant this is, but aren't these just the most interesting um, little seed pods? I got this at the uh, Palafox Market in Pensacola, and uh, it's such an interesting plant. I'm really enjoying it. And even though it was freezing last night, this monarch caterpillar survived because I saw him out here yesterday and I said to myself, I need to bring him in. And then I got, you know, carried away by weeding and things and left him out here. But here he is, I've just discovered him and he is still fine. Here's another one and he's on a little five inch milkweed in the front yard. So we're gonna be having lots of monarch butterflies. I saw one fly by me while I was in the backyard a few minutes ago. So they're here and they survived last night and hopefully they don't have anything else to worry about. It's March 13th, 2022 and look, it froze last night. There is ice on the bird bath. There's also ice on this bird bath. It's crazy. I kept checking the temperature all throughout the night and I thought we had maybe gotten away with it, but uh, it did freeze last night. They never said that it got down to 32 degrees here, but I can see evidence that things are a little bit frostbitten. 